Yashodanandana Prajachana Ranjana Yashodanandana Prajachana Ranjana Yamuna tira bana chari Yamuna tira Yamuna tira bana chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Channa Valaba Giri Varadari Gopi Channa Valaba Giri Vara Chaya Gopi Channa Valaba Giri Varadari Yashodanandana Prajachana Randana Yashodanandana Yashodanandana Prajachana Randana Yamuna Tira Banachari Yamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Shri Radhe Jai Prabhupada Jai Prabhupada Jai Brabu Pa, Jai Brabu Pa. Shila Brabu Pa, Ki. So, Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. We are reading from. Uh, wer spricht kein Englisch? Englisch geht. So. Sonst Kishori Kun hat schon eine Übersetzung. Also, Gambiram hat das Hidu übersetzt. Aha, okay. Also, falls jemand kein Englisch spricht, ist dann hinten eine Übersetzung. Ich weiß nicht, ob es dann. Ja. Falls es irgendwie nicht klappt. Good, Hare Krishna. So we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, The Status Quo, Chapter 27, Understanding Material Nature, Text 11. Mukta Lingam Sat Abhasam 
Muktalingam sat abasam. Asati prati padyate. Asati prati padyate. Sato bandum masachchakshu. Sato bandum masachchakshu. Sarvanus yut. Sarvanus yutam advayam. Sarvanus yutam advayam. Muktalingam sat abasam. Asati pratipadyate. Sato bandum masach chakshu. Sarvanus yutam advayam. Yes, please chant. Muktalingam sat abhasam. Muktalingam sat abhasam. Asati pratipadyate. Asati pratipadyate. Sato bandhum asat chakshu. Sato bandhum asat chakshu. Sarvanus yutam advayam. Sarvanus yutam advayam. Muktalingam sat abhasam. Muktalingam sat abhasam. Muktalingam Transcendental Sat Abasam Manifest as a reflection Asati In the false ego Pratipadyate He realizes Satabandum The support of the material cause Asat Chakshu the I, revealer of the illusory energy. Sarva Anus Yutam, entered into everything. Advayam, without a second. Translation. A liberated soul realizes the absolute personality of Godhead, who is transcendental and who is manifest as a reflection even in the false ego. He is the support of the material cause and he enters into everything. He is absolute, one without a second, and he is the eyes of the illusory energy. Purport. A pure devotee can see the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in everything materially manifest, manifested. He is present there only as a reflection, but a pure devotee can realize that in the darkness of material illusion, the only light is the Supreme Lord, who is its support. It is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita that the background of the material manifestation is Lord Krishna. And as confirmed in the Brahma Samhita, Krishna is the cause of all causes. In the Brahma Samhita it is stated that the Supreme Lord, by his partial or plenary expansion, is present not only within this universe and in each and every universe, but in every atom, although he is one without a second. The word Advayam without a second, which is used in this verse, 
indicates that although the Supreme Personality of Godhead is represented in everything, including the atoms, he is not divided. His presence in everything is explained in the next verse. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshumilitam Mina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangung Langaya Tegirim Yat Kripata Mangvande Shri Gurundina Taranam Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svabadantikam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Mukta Lingam Sat Abhasam Asati Pratibhadyate Sato Bandum Asat Chakshu Sarvanus Yutam Advayam A liberated soul realizes the absolute personality of Godhead who is transcendental and who is manifest as a reflection even in the false ego. He is the support of the material cause and he enters into everything. He is absolute, one without a second, and he is the eyes of the illusory energy. <coughs> Hare Krishna. So we hear about the self-liberated uh, soul, mukta, a mukta, mukta lingam, I said here, transcendental or a liberated person. And what are on some of his qualities? So the first quality, what is explained here is sat abhasam, asati pratipadyate. He realizes the eternal in the temporary. Yeah? And Prabhupada gives a further hint to what is asati, the temporary, it is the false ego, which is also interesting. So more specific. So it's more specific how a liberated person, transcendentalist, someone who is very, very advanced in consciousness, very rare in this material world, uh, realizes Krishna. So he can see Krishna inside the material world. He doesn't have to go outside the material world. It's a very desir desirable um, consciousness yeah, to be always connected with Krishna, even in our conditioned circumstances. So Sat Abhasam, he uh, is, is manifested as a reflection, as a reflection. So when there's a reflection, it's not the source of the light. It's just a reflection. Something reflects the light. Like when we have some reflect, Like here is a reflection. Here is some, some light here and here, here. Everywhere reflections, right? Because the sunlight comes in. And so there are some symptoms of the presence of the sunlight, of the sun. In the same way, a devotee perceives the reflection of the Lord everywhere. He sees... And as Prabhupada also explains, that the Lord is everywhere and in everything. He's even in every atom. Prabhupada says in Brahma Samhita, this is stated. Huh? And it's, um, <laughs> um, uh, it's said in Brahma Samhita, right? This Krishna is in, in the Paramanu, Andantarasta Paramanu. Andantarastam. He's situated in every atom, right? Krishna is in every atom. But we cannot see, but a pure devotee can see that. He can perceive. Of course, there's always the discussion, how does it pure devotee perceive the presence of the Lord. Prabhupada says it's like, it's not necessarily that he sees the super soul and everything, but he sees everything in connection with the Lord. And not just in a theoretical way, but in a very practical way. He really understands that Krishna is everything, that everything belongs to Krishna, that everything should be used in Krishna's service. He's completely realized. There's no, no um, illusion anymore. Right? As it said here, even in the false ego, the Supreme Lord is perceived. So more or less, he doesn't have a false ego. He perceives maybe, okay, there is a false ego, but he's not influenced by the false ego anymore. And that the false ego turns then into a spiritual ego, which is a servant of Krishna. So he's through and through um, identifying with his spiritual true position. And as such, he's a devotee of the Lord. In every circumstance, in every situation, he has always this consciousness. It's never conditioned anymore, free, very desirable. Yeah, we should strive for such uh, consciousness, <laughs> such existence. Yeah, this is what is uh, necessary. We should, but 
rarely can we desire it if we don't understand how we are conditioned. We have to understand the, the miserable nature of our conditioned existence. You understand? This is terrible. <laughs> and it's not terrible because, oh, I suffer so much in the material world or it's boring. No, it's terrible because I cannot see Krishna. This is, should be the motivation for a devotee. Often we want to be devotees because we don't like the material world anymore. Yeah? But this is a, then there is some tinge of a desire for liberation. So it's not pure bhakti. Of course, if we have this motivation better than nothing and we cannot artificially get rid of it, oh, I should not be like that, of course it plays a role. I want to be Krishna conscious because somehow or other material world gives me some troubles. Yeah? But with time, the, the pure motivation of wanting to serve Krishna, wanting to love Krishna, experience purity in that sense, should be the dominating factor in our, in our Krishna consciousness. And it's not so difficult either. Maybe in the beginning it's a little bit too, um, too theoretical, abstract. How should this work? Because our material nature is still so strong. But the more we hear about pure devotees and uh, Krishna and his associates, the more we have a clear picture. It's more specific and we see, ah, this is how it looks and this is also what I could do or what I could be actually. A devotee has actually a grand vision of his existence. He can really stretch his imagination into changing his whole persona into something completely different. I could even be one of the associates of Krishna. Why not? Right? Normally in conditional situation we think, okay, this is how I am, this is how I always be. How I will always be like this. No? But no, we can change completely, radically. This is the potential of Krishna consciousness. Complete transformation in that sense. From material conditioned state, material consciousness, material desires to completely spiritual. And it's, this is the path. No? That's Bhakti Marga, the path of Bhakti. Yeah, what, what we are, where we are traversing, what we are traversing. And this should be a division of our lives. Most, many people, right? Not, not everyone, some people are very, you know, live more or less from day to day. They don't have a vision about their life. They don't have a goal. But many people have a goal. This is what I want to be. This is what I want to achieve. Ask any child, what do you want to be when you're big? I want to be the CEO of the biggest company of the whole world. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Something. I want to be a big general and wipe the world of all terrorism. Whoa, <laughs> something like this, I don't know. Yeah. So even children, they, of course it changes from day to day, <laughs> week to week, whatever they see maybe in TV. Oh, I want to be like that. <laughs> I want to be a fire, fireman, firework, firefighter. I want to be this, that. No? But in general, when we grow older, there's some... Uh, some, some substantial, some true vision of the life and okay, this is what I want to be, this is what I want to work, yeah. And devotees should have this in a spiritual sense. Oh, I want to be like this. I want to be a pure devotee. Everyone should think like this. I want to be, be a pure devotee. And the achievement of this lofty goal depends on our desire, how much we really want it. And this is what we have to develop. A strong desire of wanting to be like that, that what we heard now, this is, of course, we, we understand this is the pure devotee and we should see the qualities in the pure devotee, in the spiritual master, in Srila Prabhupada, in all our acharyas. But at the same time, this is also a an, um, an, 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 an description of our, um, of, our, of our goal. We should think like this, oh, I want to be like that. A liberated soul realizes the absolute personality of God that Wow, I want to realize the absolute personality of God. <laughs> that must be really cool. That must be amazing to realize the absolute personality of God. And he has explained that the uh, absolute personality of God is manifested everywhere. Then you can see everywhere Krishna and see everything in connection with Krishna. You have a complete pure vision. You have a vision of wonder in any situation. Wherever you look, it's a wonder, it's amazing, because Krishna is amazing and his world is amazing. And everything can be seen in regards to Krishna. And then the devotee is never bewildered anymore. Because material energy is a bewildering energy, 
right? It's bewildering. It's, it's sucking in the living entity and its power. And not just that, then it catches the devotee. It catches the devotee. There are two, ener- uh, two aspects of the material energy. No? Prakshik Atmika and Varana. Uh, Varana Atmika? What's it called? Pra- Avarana Atmika. Avarana Atmika, yes. Yeah, the one is the covering and the other one is the uh, throwing down, right? But what comes first? What comes first, Prabhu? Different opinions. That's also what I think, because both could be the case. First, it, it bewilders you, and then you don't know what's going on. You're weak, your vision is conditioned, and then whoosh, it throws you down. Or someday it throws you down and then conditions you, right? Which, you, which do you prefer? <laughs> None. <laughs> Yes, we don't prefer any. <laughs> any, we don't want to be conditioned. But material energy is very, very powerful. That this strong soul, which is a particle of God, and God who is almighty, right? God almighty. But the energy of the Lord is pa- more powerful than the particle. But only if this particle, the soul, separates from the shelter of the Lord. Yeah. Then we are lost. Then the soul is lost forever. <laughs> like probably, like it's almost forever, right? It's this nitya bada, eternally conditioned. Yeah? And we are so lost in this world that we don't know what's going on. And, and the illusion is so, uh, uh, that only works because everyone thinks he's not lost. Everyone thinks it's okay. Everyone thinks. Uh, I know. This is the illusion. The illusion is not that you understand, I know nothing, because then you would be aware, my God, I don't know nothing. What's going on? Then you would wonder. Actually, the realization of your ignorance would give you impetus for getting knowledge to, to change something. But the illusion makes you know everything is all right. Everything is good. You're fine. Even in your worst situation. This is how it is. That's life. <laughs> right? If people suffer, that's life. What to do? That's, that's normal. Suffering is normal. Hmm? Move on. Yeah, it's normal. Move on. No problem. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, and the, the devotee is not, this, this pure devotee is not um, illusioned anymore. He's not, he can see through it, right? As it's also said here, w- it's an interesting phrase, as such chakshu. And Prabhupada translates this is as the eyes of the illusory energy. The eyes of the illusory energy. And then Prabhupada in brackets says in the word for word, the eye, in brackets, revealer of the illusory energy. Right? So this is the, the, the devotee, and of course Krishna, the devotee has the vision of how the material energy works and he's not, not bewildered anymore. He's not tempted. And it's not, he's not influenced. He's not, how to say, what is the word in English? Beeindruckt. How do you say? Be- huh? Impressed. impressed. Yeah, he's not impressed. He's not impressed. You know, whatever. Big thing happens. Small <coughs> thing happens. Whatever happens. You know. He's cool. Completely. Okay. World war. Inflation. Terror. We win the championship. Yeah. Whatever. It's just the, you know, it's just the workings of this temporary situation. It's just one, one light flash after the other. Temporary, I mean it's not impressive, not afraid, not attracted, completely transcendental. Prabhupada, that's the reason why Prabhupada was so cool. He was just cool in any situation. Whoever, whatever great personality sat in front of him, was for him he saw the spiritual soul, he saw a bewildered spiritual soul. Even though the guy was the president of the biggest country or whatever, the Pope or whatever. <laughs> Some of those Prabhupada met great men. But in front of Prabhupada, he became quite normal. <laughs> quite normal. Everyone would go, oh, this is the mayor of Paris. <laughs> you know the story when he met the mayor of Paris? <laughs> it's so amazing. It's so amazing. How would you act? How would you behave if you invited for a public uh, inauguration, more or less, to be received by the city of Paris? 
How would you, oh, I am, I am invited, they greet me, I'm, I'm allowed to come, oh, and as an honorable guest, I would be, thank you so much, that's your, so kind, oh, your honorable mayor, I, 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 wonderful, and thank you, it would be like this. But Prabhupada was very different, actually. Yeah, there's actually a video of that, and unfortunately, the audio didn't work. The devotees messed up the audio, this recorder did not work, so it's only, only a video is there, but it's better than nothing. And Prabhupada was supposed, there's a, like a whole ceremony, how this goes on. And they told Prabhupada, okay, first the mayor comes in, he will, uh, you will sit on this chair, and he will, and he will stand, and then he will speak in French, he will greet you, and a devotee will translate for you. Then when he's done, you have to stand up from your seat, and then you can speak. Then you can address the mayor in this official way. And the brother says, okay. So, and then you see in this recording, the mayor, he speaks, no, 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 speaks. And then Prabhupada was supposed to, you know, stand up and speak, and Prabhupada just sat. Prabhupada was not standing up, he was sitting. And everyone's like, all these officials of, you know, Paris officials, huge place, they were like, uh, what's going on? Why is he not standing up? And Prabhupada was just sitting and started speaking. And then one devotee said, Prabhupada, you have to stand up. And Prabhupada said, up, stand up for whom? <laughs> <laughs> and it was quite clear <laughs> that Prabhupada will not stand up. And then some of these officials, even the mayor, he said, okay, then, yeah, then he sits, you know. Which is an affront, huh, as you say in French, an affront. <laughs> That's quite... <laughs> So Prabhupada, and then Prabhupada understood it. And then Prabhupada was speaking, not, oh, thank you so much, that you, and all that. No, he was heavy. They would say he was heavy. He said, you are the kshatriyas. You are the uh, government officials. You should take care of the spiritual life of people, and this and that. You have a great responsibility. He was going like this, on and on and on. Not afraid, not impressed. Yeah. But actually then, when in this recording, it's in this uh, following Prabhupada series, then Prabhupada ma made a tour through this town hall, Paris town hall, which was very impressive. And actually Prabhupada mm, remarked uh, that actually it's a very beautiful building, and he even said, according to this, uh, reco according to this recording, that Prabhupada looked at all these opulent uh, paintings and frescoes and whatever, and then he said that, uh, according to this, devotee that he said, uh, I did not know that such a thing still exists in Kali Yuga. So he, he showed some appreciation then for the, for the building at least. <laughs> Maybe not for the people inside the building, <laughs> but at least for the building. Yeah. So in that sense, of course, uh, we really have to always give a bit of a disclaimer. We have to see how we behave in front of any person according to our capacity. I, I don't think I could imitate or would imitate Prabhupada uh, like that. You know, if you have the power to do that, then you can do that. But we have to be realistic, right? Because sometimes if we do like that, say, no, Prabhupada, Prabhupada was doing like this. If our mayor comes here, you know, from Janlusbrunn, Janlusbrunn mayor, yo, grüß Gott, you been there? <laughs> Who sometimes comes, then we also say, you are the mayor, your responsibilities. <laughs> we might not, you know. And it's not necessary, right? And Prabhupada was, of course, the Acharya. And sometimes we might have devotees who are like this and can do like that, of course. But it has to be, yeah, we have to deal with this with discretion. Yeah, but my point is this uh, unimpressed uh, consciousness, yeah. And we should learn, we should learn that. Because we are new devotees. We are new devotees. What? I'm not a new devotee. I'm since 20 years, 30 years, I'm in the Hare Krishna movement. Yeah, but, you know, 20 years... Compared to Nitya Bada, how much is that, right? <laughs> yeah, we are, and sometimes uh, five years or two years or very new Bhakta, we are new. So m we, are s we can, might sometimes we are still impressed by material nature, right? You can see that if you're attracted to it, if you think, think something is cool, wow, this is cool. <laughs> see some clip on TikTok, I don't know what's cool now. <laughs> TikTok, I d could not imagine that it becomes somehow very how to say uh, that many people used it, but yeah, somehow or other, TikTok. Oh, look at that on TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. The name is already so ridiculous, actually. 
Not that YouTube is much cooler, but still. Yeah, so on and um, then, yeah, we are easily impressed and we think this is nice. And of course, we cannot be artificially saying, ah, everything in the material world, this doesn't impress me. We have to go with our development, of course. But still, the devotee is not impressed, especially by the ridiculous performance of the materialists. And that is the ridiculous performance of the materialists. Yeah. It's, what are they doing? They have no clue about the soul, about Krishna. They have no clue about it. We shouldn't be impressed. We shouldn't think this is something achievable. I want to be like that. No, we should not. Yeah. We should have our um, role models as the, the devotees. And uh, this description is very nice. So, Krishna k is uh, perceived as a reflection in the uh, darkness in this material world. So, the children, when they're allowed, they need to play, huh? This is a baby, this is no, no excuse. No, it's my son, so it's okay. <laughs> I can be heavy with him. <laughs> so, good, he's absolute one without a second and he's the eyes of the illusory energy. Asat Chakshu, he is the eyes of the illusory energy. It's very interesting. So yeah, we want to uh, develop also a consciousness like this. Be, um, and not just seeing the illusion, but seeing Krishna in the material world, right? We want to always go for the positive, right? We want to go for the positive. This is, by the end, what really works, to develop the relationship with Krishna, which is way more nice and interesting than anything else. We cannot go around and say, oh, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Of course, the via negativa is also important. Krishna says also many things in that regard. Actually, he says, from the highest world to the lowest world, every place is a place of suffering. <laughs> He's quite strong. Hmm? Yeah. But our path is the path of, of devotion, right? of bhakti, of the higher taste. And how do we get the higher taste? Yeah, we just follow the sadhana, we hear about Krishna, we hear of the beauty of Krishna. Krishna is more beautiful than anything else. It's even said that when we meditate on the eyebrows of Krishna, then you, get, you lose all uh, lust. The eyebrows of Krishna take away lust. Interesting. The eyebrows. Why the eyebrows? Prabhu, Adi Purusha Prabhu, why the eyebrows? Because they're like the bows that defeat the bow of Cupid. Ah, okay, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Because Cupid has a bow, right? Amor. Huh? Amor, he has a bow. And when he shoots his arrow into your heart, you are lost in the, uh, in the in the feelings of love. I love you, <laughs> and you start to sing. <laughs> you, don't, you cannot sing, and you you see everything is beautiful, wonderful, and you're lost <laughs> in love. <laughs> it's like that, yeah. And sometimes this love goes away, and then you suddenly see it clearly. Oh my God, <laughs> with whom did I fall in love? <laughs> oh really? I did. Yeah, yeah. This is interesting. It's the complete bewilderment, right? Uh, shooting his arrows. So, and Krishna is the new Cupid, it said, right? He's the new Cupid. He is the real limbless person, right? Because Cupid somehow rather lost Shiva, I think. Huh? He burned Cupid once Shiva was <laughs> meditating and Cupid was um, asked to get him aroused for his wife. But he was also not impressed. Cupid was shooting his arrows, but Shiva was, was really cool. And then he burned the, this, <laughs> this uh, Cupid. And then it's uh, actually for us, the new Cupid said, the new Cupid is Krishna. He's the real Cupid. He's more attractive than any material attraction, either in male or female form. He should be the new Cupid. He should be our main attraction. And for our uh, pure devotees, our charyas, it's like that. This is why they follow so strictly the path of renunciation and all that, <coughs> because they, uh, they have the highest beauty in Krishna. Yeah, so his eyebrows are wo wonderful, beautiful. And, and if you, uh, eyebrows, Ramananda and Singer, they've lost one eyebrow. <laughs> really, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know what's, what will Nisinga do with him then. So, yeah. So in the singer is beautiful, Krishna in any form is most beautiful and, and we want to see the beauty of, of, uh, of, of Krishna. 
right? And I think every one of you had sometimes this situation when you were standing in front of the Lord, in, in, in wherever you were, either in your temple, in a beautiful form. And sometimes Krishna shows his beauty and suddenly you see, oh, he's so beautiful. Everyone should have this experience. Oh, he's so beautiful. I, I could look at him the whole day now. He reveals sometimes his beauty. So this is this revelation we need. And this comes by bhakti, by intense bhakti. When we surrender nicely to Krishna, he reveals his beauty and he re re reveals his wonderful qualities. And so we work on our relationship on a day-to-day basis with Krishna. This is bhakti yoga. Yeah. This is what I want. I want to experience Krishna, see Krishna. As Prabhupada says, play with Krishna, dance with Krishna, go in the spiritual world. Yeah. But it's only possible if we are yeah, sincere, yeah, sincere in our spiritual life and not get distracted by material energy. Yeah. So that's the and what because we are not naturally free from this attraction, therefore we have rules and regulations. And we should learn the rules and regulations. I have to do this, I don't do that. And I follow this and at the same time practice my sadhana, the positive practice, and then bhakti will develop. Bhakti will sprout in our heart. It's this bhakti creeper, the plant, the bhakti lata, will grow and grow and grow and grow to Krishna's lotus feet. And this we should observe, like a gardener. As Mahabharu says, we should be gardeners. When you grow a plant, you take care. Does it grow well? Every day you look, has enough water? Is it you know, flowering? Is it getting stronger? Are the roots stronger? Yeah. Everyone probably sometimes planted some plant or did someone never tried it? Anyone, sometimes, huh? this, that. And then you have to take care. And some plants are very delicate, especially in the beginning. You really have to take care. Not enough, not too much water, not less water. Check everything, give some, uh, how's it called, fertilizer and all that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's interesting that Mahabharu gives this example for the development of bhakti. You should be a gardener and take care of your bhakti lata, of the plant of devotion. And how do you water it? By the chanting of the holy name. This is how you water it. The and, and not just any chanting, but attentive chanting. Attentive chanting waters this plant and it grows. And then you, then yeah, we have to check. Once I asked uh, Swami about, uh, I don't know how it was, it was, was the question, but he, the answer, I just remember the answer. He said, you should observe always some advancement. You should always see that you advance in your spiritual life. Even if it's only a little bit, but you should always observe an advancement. There should not be a stagnation or even going back or going the opposite direction. You should always see Advancement, but how do you quantify or qualify this advancement? Because there are many symptoms. How inspired are you? How eager are you for devotional service? How much taste do you have for, for reading? How much do you read or chant? How is your association with devotees? Is it based on spiritual principles? How do you behave in front of devotees? How do you uh, observe the development of your character? the spiritual character, all that, right? So there are symptoms, how you can observe advancement. Do you see a change over time? I'm a different now than one year before, right? We should, as I said before, we should transform. should be a change, complete transformation, actually, right? So, and, and so Mahabharata says that the plant, this bhakti plant should grow, it should develop, and you water it, you need to take care of it. And it should be the most important, like the gardener. His job is to take care of the garden, like we have a gardener here. This is his devotional job. And he, has, he always thinks about the plants and that they grow and all that. Why that they give a fruit? We don't grow plants just for growing plants. The plant should give a fruit. And this fr fruit is in the end, in Mahabharata's example, prema. This is the fruit, prema. It's a wonderful gift. It's a wonderful fruit. And then, uh, of course, uh, as any gardener knows, you water, very nice, yes, but some other 
um, living entities or plants take advantage of the water. Yeah. And these are the weeds. And this is interesting. Some other things might grow which you don't want to grow. And then you have to take care of this also. It's, uh, Laba, Pucha, Pratishta, Kutinati, and Chiva Himsa. Uh, Mahabharata says these five. So Kutinati, it means diplomacy. And there can many things be said about this diplomacy. But to not be straightforward, to be not to be um, honest with devotees, maybe even use devotees for your ulterior motives, right? To be diplomatical. No, you sh we should be honest and straight and, and pure in that sense. So, and then Shiva Himsa, uh, to, to, to give violence to other living entities, or eat them even. <laughs> so this is, of course, very bad. This is a, a, a weed. And even f in a devotee association, maybe not physical violence, but maybe, um, yeah, maybe also, uh, how to say, uh, not, yeah, emotional <laughs> violence, or I don't know, uh, to be rude or things like this. We should be very gentle with devotees, serving, loving, all that. And then we have the puja, pratishta, and labha, uh, meaning to um, puja means to uh, expect some worship. And in the beginning, we don't expect worship. I speak in the beginning from a point of view of a new devotee. Maybe some of you are born into the movement, so it's a little bit different. <laughs> but as a new devotee, you don't expect any worship. When I joined the Hare Krishna movement, I was 21. I could clearly see I'm a neophyte, I'm a beginner. They are so advanced, they are so wonderful. I don't expect any worship. But with time, when you get a little bit older and you get more respect and you get more spiritual false ego, <laughs> spiritual false ego, then you expect worship, definitely. What? You are not worshipping me? You don't realize how advanced I am? Give me some worship. Maybe, you know, I don't have to sit on us and do a whole arati or something, but at least some, you know, you can wash my feet or something. Huh? <laughs> something like this, small, right? <laughs> something false ego is so crazy. Expect some worship. Yes, I'm, I'm worshipable. <laughs> I'm qualified to be worshipped. Shouldn't be there. And yeah, Mahabrabhu warns of that. Puja, that can be that you expect puja. Some special, you know, more than others. Yeah? And then also have this pratishta, which also means like this. And, uh, this greed for name, fame, and distinction, Prabhupada says. Name, fame, and distinction. I think it was that, right? Name, fame, distinction. Distinction. I'm different. I get puja because I'm different. I'm not just like you guys. You know, I'm different devotee. I'm a bit special devotee. More, yeah, so worship me quite yeah, and and it's actually it's not as uh, satirical or comical as I present it now actually it's a serious it's, it's actually a serious and real problem actually it's a serious and real problem yeah if we express it then it's quite comical and ridiculous but the mind you know there you cannot see so clearly and subtly it can creep in yeah especially if you are older especially if you are preaching Right? Especially if you are in a position of authority, or a temple president, or a guru even. So those who are in the authority, in a position of authority, they have to be very, very, very careful of that, and to always see themselves as servant of the servant of the servant, as anyone else, right? So it's difficult. Yeah? This, is, this is why so many of our leaders had problems, because the, the position of leadership corrupted their devotional attitude and their humility. Yeah, and and when you become very advanced, of course we should be humble. But at the same time, if your sadhana is wonderful and you you are uh, very realized, maybe even then a devotee has is very advanced in consciousness. He, oh yeah, like the gopis, it says right <laughs> in intense canto in the Ras Lila, in the most sacred part of our Bhagavatam, the most sacred Panchatyaya Bhagavatam. It's called, right? There's five chapters. You have a story of a downfall, <laughs> more or less, right? It's kind of an example. They become proud. Oh, I am with Krishna. I'm a special gopi. He's only with me. This was distinction. Right? Or can we say that this was Pratishta? Adi It's a little bit too much to say. No, no it's okay. <laughs> I can check here. I have a very learned devotee here. Uh, it's good to have you here. <laughs> can check. Yeah, they are, they are, it's exemplary. It's exemplary. On the last... In the, uh, almost in the supreme situation, being with Krishna personally, still you can have a problem. 
Or, of course, we know the story of Bharat Maharaj, who was, as he said, on the stage of Bhava. He was not just a renounced king doing some uh, um, sacrifice in the forest and, and yeah, doing his sadhana and was into renunciation. He said he had Bhava, he had love to Krishna. He loved Krishna, but then he fell. So, this is, these are serious problems, definitely. So, pratishta, pucha, and laba, laba means, or loba also, means to be greedy, be greedy for material things. And um, this can also come as advantages in devotional service sometimes. One sense, in one sense, I can see it practical. If you are a um, senior devotee, you might get more things, you might get donations, you might get a special room when you travel or something like that. But also Krishna gives. I can see this very clearly that Krishna gives things. Right? And that we become a little bit greedy. Oh, thank you, Krishna. You gave me this wonderful car or house or this. I want more. I want more. Give me more. Shouldn't be there. So all this should not... And these are distractions on the path. These are the, the, the f uh, f uh, fluctuations of the material energy. And the devotee should see through. No, this is not what I want. I don't want the benefits or even of bhakti. Prabhupada says a devotee can develop any mystical powers even. Prabhupada says the last snare, the last trap in devotional service is to be, want to be one with God. Or in the spiritual life, right? I want to be one. So all these offerings... No, I want to be a servant of the servant of the servant of the servant. It's, I think it's not easy to be always so determined, but we have to work on that. And then Krishna will be very happy. He says, you are amazing devotee, you are so wonderful. Please come to Rindavan. Because you, you only want me. I offer you anything, everything, but you choose me. Like Arjuna, he needed the army of Krishna. He had this huge battle. Finally, he needed any army he can get. They were, it was like a ratio of two to three down, right? So, so Duryodhan had more Akshahinis. And then Krishna said, okay, either you take me or you take the army. And there was not, not, no consideration, actually. It said Arjuna was not, or he was not considering. Okay, what, let me think about it. Let me think about it. Poor, difficult, difficult. Okay, you, of course, pure, my, my friend, pure, you know, greatest personality. You can help, but the army is super powerful. No? Narayan Sena. Uh, mm, I don't know. I don't, Krishna, what shall I do? <laughs> no, no. Krishna, of course, I'll take you. With you on my side, we can do anything. And Duryodhan said, what a fool. <laughs> what a fool. Wow, thank you. I don't know to whom he said thank you, but <laughs> if he said thank you at all. Yes, great. That worked out well. Huh? So devotee is uh, spontaneous. Such a devotee is spontaneously attracted to Krishna. No, Krishna over everything and anything. And so the devotee purchases Krishna. Oh, you take me over anything and everything. And then he gives himself to the devotee in the same way. Krishna is in, in, in the hands of the devotee because he is so pure. Yeah. And this is most beautiful and wonderful that how Krishna is dominated by love. That this is the real thing. This love, bhakti, prema, priti, all that. Right? This, is, this is the principle. It's not just our principle, what we should abide by and where we should work ourselves towards to. No, even Krishna is into that. Bhakti is Krishna's, Krishna's emotion, Krishna's motivation, Krishna's everything. And so in that sense, through Bhakti, it's not just that Bhakti is something what we need to, to, to please Krishna. No, it's Krishna's personal energy, Bhakti Devi. Right? It's Bhakti Devi. This is what Krishna uh, is, is motivation. So we become like Krishna in that sense. No? And so we belong to Krishna then and we will go to Krishna. There is no other place then. If we are like this, there is no other place to go. A natural devotee will go to Krishna. And Prabhupada says there is even a chance to go to Krishna after this very life. After this very life. It's very real that this is possible to achieve. Imagine. Because some of you are a little bit young, so you might not think so much about the end. <laughs> But actually, if you are a wise person, even a young body, you should consider that definitely. Definitely. 
This is not just a meditation for the old guys. What about death? Yes, I will die very <laughs> soon, you know. When they meet on the street, how are you doing? Yes, yes, my, my liver, yeah, yeah, my knee, oh, yeah. We can see it's going to the end. When you're young, you run around, you jump around, this, that. No, we are not young. We are eternal spiritual souls. And ac actually, devotees in this movement are, you can say, old souls. Why souls? They have seen anything, everything. Why can, how can you surrender to Krishna? Yeah, because you're not interested in material world anymore. You're, of course, slightly, we still have a bit of an artist here and there, but don't, mainly we want to be devotees. We are done with the material world. It's nothing to see anymore, nothing to do anymore. What's there? Seen all done, how, seen it, done it, experienced it. Now Krishna. So, also, in a young body, you should consider how will be my death? Okay, death, I will die. Okay, I will, it will be intense, of course, but I should think about Krishna. Prabhupada says it, yeah, think about Krishna. Yang yang va pismaran babam, tiachatianti kalevaram. What I will think in moment of death, there I will go, okay, I have to strive towards this goal. Yeah. Life is like the school, and death is the test. And most of you probably are in school, and you have exams. Okay, you're not in school. <laughs> or something like Gurukul or whatever. No, not even Gurukul? Huh? Okay, okay, you're, you're done with school. <laughs> okay. But you, some of you were at least sometimes at school. I don't know to whom I'm talking here. <laughs> I don't know, who are you? So, I mean, school, right? Going to school, sitting there, learning, listening, all that. So, and you learn all that stuff because most probably there's a test, there's an exam, and then all that, what you are supposed to learn, it will be tested. How did you make it? Yeah, then there's a mark. And if you are a serious student, you will take that serious. When there is a test, which will, will come very soon, right? The young students sometimes say, oh, it's just in one, two, three months. I don't have to learn now. <laughs> and time short and short. Ah, still some time, <laughs> some time. Then two days before, then, oh, I, I think I have to start learning now. <laughs> yeah, some uh, did like that maybe sometimes. So then, yeah, you want to, if you're a good student, you want to pass the exam. Be there, know everything, make have got a good mark. Right. Death is the test. And the good student learns in advance. Especially when he's young, actually, as Prabhupada always says. Huh? When you're young, what is it? Acharat Kaumara how is it? Acharat Kaumara Pragyo. Yes. Yes, exactly. It's in the preface to any volume of the Bhagavatam. Start early. Oh, I'm still young, no problem, life ahead of me. Ah, when I'm old, I start. No, start now with five years. <laughs> right? Start. So you think about the exam. Exam is death. To be prepared. You want to be prepared. And actually, it doesn't mean that you live your whole life in a complete depressed way. I will die! <laughs> no, I don't want to die. <laughs> no! Actually, my good teacher here, Adi Purusha Baru, he quotes once some study. He said that those people who think about death every day, they live more happily. Yeah, they become sec uh, several days, 70% happier after visiting a cemetery. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> so if you think about death in general, or your death, actually it makes you happy, especially if you have a spiritual vision towards it. No problem. Dhirastatrana muyati, devotee is not bewildered. Not bewildered, not even when he's about to die or others die. So it's great. We have a great life in Krishna consciousness. We have the most wonderful philosophy. We have the most wonderful uh, gurus led by Srila Prabhupada. We have the most wonderful Sangha. Devotees are most wonderful people in the whole world, right? They are so wonderful. This association is so great. Compare it with non devotees. Of course, there are non-devotees also nice and wonderful, but some, you know, it's definitely different. <laughs> yeah. And we have the most wonderful personality of God. It. Who has Krishna as God? <laughs> right? This is the most wonderful God. He's a cowherd boy who plays and sings and dances and smiles and makes jokes. Everyone is into jokes. Everyone likes to laugh. Go to Vrindavan. Krishna tells the most wonderful jokes. In the, I think I read in the Priyat Bhagavad Tamrita was that when the devotees, the coward boys, take uh, prasadam with Krishna, 
No, I don't know. What, I think it was Priya Bhagavatamrita. He says, Krishna says, please sit down now, everyone. Just eat. And then he stands like in front, like on a stage, and he makes some jokes and drama, entertains everyone, makes jokes about the others and this and that, like, like stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy. He's entertaining everyone and they're laughing and eating and Krishna makes the whole show. Imagine. That must be so <laughs> hilarious, wonderful. So dance, sing, play, choke with Krishna. This is what's about. And this is not just some sentimental vision of, the, of transcendence. No, this is our tradition. All our charis talk about that, right? So we have a wonderful life now and ahead of us. We want to use it and we want to share it. We want to share it. We try in our capacity to give this gift of Krishna consciousness to others and our life will become most wonderful and sublime. Thank you so much for listening. Hare Krishna. Any questions or anything to add? Yes, Hare Purusha Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you for a very lively class and excellent examples and presentation with humor too, as you also speak. That in Vrindavan you have humor. I have s uh, some questions. Um, you, s you mentioned that <coughs> we need to uh, learn to see Krishna at all times. So, um, how to see Krishna in some uh, very heavy exams? Also, you mentioned that we have to take exams, but sometimes mm. we complain that uh, yeah. the exam is too heavy. How? Who can ever pass this exam yeah. or that exam? Sometimes there are exams, like intermediate exams, and they are quite heavy. So, how can we see Krishna in um, these Situ uh, circumstances. Yeah, thank you. This is actually a very, very, very important question because when everything is fine and wonderful and great, we love Krishna, of course, and we are grateful, wonderful, great. But what about yeah, when something really terrible happens? Loss, some loss, some disease, some yeah, so many. <laughs> There's a huge variety of of uh, such uh, situations. <coughs> of course, it's a test. Of course, it's a test. The devotee should see it always as a test. Prabhupada gives many examples of that. He spoke often about it, how a devotee should see it actually as being Krishna himself doing that. And it's, the te it's also a test for bhakti because um, in our Tatenu Kampamsu Samikshamano verse, Brahma says that the one who is experiencing suffering based on his own karma, self-afflicted, self, uh, so to say, he will offer with his body, mind and words humble obeisances to Krishna. And such a person is eligible for bhakti, right? Mukti bhakti. <coughs> so, and, and also we have the, the same point in the Shikshashtakam, in the Eight Shloka, that whatever happens, however Krishna treats me, he is always my worshipable Lord. So we have the, uh, let's say, the ideal there, this is quite clear, what should be and how should it be seen. And then we have to see how we can apply that. Of course, when some problem comes, in the beginning often it's a shock. We are like shocked and we have to sort it out. Of course, we should take guidance, definitely. It depends how heavy the problem is. We need guidance, someone who explains to us, helps us. And maybe we cannot, of course, easily apply this philosophy, but at least we should know it, definitely. At least we should know in theory these two shlokas, which I think are very, very helpful in these situations, to have this uh, ideal. And, and then we need devotees how to help us to apply it and also to help us comfort us in this emotional troubling situation. So I think these emotions definitely have to be taken into consideration. It's not, okay, this is the shloka, and of course now I, I'm transcendental. And thank you, Krishna, thank you so much that you know, whatever terrible problem happened. Thank you, this is wonderful, it's all your mercy. It cannot be done in a fanatical way. It has to be done definitely in a, in a realistic way. And maybe sometimes it's not, prob prob uh, not possible to apply it. Sometimes we might be troubled, uh, emotional, sad, angry, and maybe even with Krishna. And we might not even be able to overcome it. I think, I don't know, I haven't been so much in such situations, but I think Krishna accepts it and says, okay, then be angry with me a bit and... And then you will come out of it anyway, because you know, so, oh, sorry Krishna that I said, how could you do that to me? That's not fair. 
Better than to suppress it and be in an illusion of no, no problem for me. I'm, you know, it's written like, I think it's not realistic. So I think association of advanced devotees who can guide, can help, take care of all aspects of our troubled uh, self, emotional, physical, whatever it might be. But then also have the vision towards the spiritual, and uh, and then I think it's it's manageable. And then definitely always know the ideal too. There were a couple of words in this regard. Thank you for your very important question. There was once a devotee in Berlin, he gave a seminar. I forgot his name actually. And his seminar was on the spiritual chiuchitsu or judo or something. Yeah, and th th this, this question you asked was the whole point of this topic. He was proper disciple even and he gave this seminar. How to deal with this troubling situation. So a whole seminar about it. Very well helpful. Good, okay, Hare Krishna, yes. Yeah, microphone. Hare Krishna. Um, I have a question that um, links directly to this um, first question, and it's um, more in detail. W um, so, if I am tr in trouble and I am tested by Krishna. Um, I have um, read some quotes by uh, Srila Prabhupada that um, a pure devotee never asks um, their Lord um, for anything. So, mm -hmm. um, but then I think about examples like Draupadi who um, was in trouble and she asks for help from Krishna and so um, was she not a pure do devotee or maybe some other um, examples were there um, where a devotee as asked um, Krishna um, to help um, mm -hmm. him or um, I have I have the um, feeling like maybe I could just power through by um, maybe chanting or maybe just a really um, trying to stay devotional and not not ask for any help from Krishna and at any time mm. is this the right at attitude or um, is the is the should I do something else okay yeah it's also a practical and very good question it's a lot could be spoken about that and but the, the first thing is when you say a pure devotee doesn't ask for anything so how is this to apply for us similar to the what I said before, we have to see how pure are we, and it's not a not purity is the how to say that one which the, the, the quality what forces us towards a certain activity. It's more or how to say purity is in one sense the symptom, and this depends on our desires. The meaning when we don't have any desires, of course, we will not ask Krishna for anything. Right? But when we have desires, we have to definitely take them into account. We cannot negate them. Some desires we can negate. But we have to distinguish between desires which I can give up, no problem. Like you come to Krishna consciousness and you read you should not eat, 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 should not eat fish, eat uh, meat and eggs. Yeah? It's, it's quite easy to give it up. Even we might have some tendency to, oh, but it tastes good, but still no. It's no problem. It's actually no problem. But some desires, we cannot just give it up because we heard about it. So we have to distinguish what we can give up and what not. So and this is uh, what makes us pure, the less material, egoistic desires we have. And then uh, from the other point of view, how many spiritual desires we have. So when it said, a pure devotee is not asking Krishna for anything. Okay, how much can I apply that? Right? How, how pure am I? And where there's impurity, I have to learn to deal with it. This is the, the this is the job of us devotees, so the first thing, <coughs> and then this powering through. Yeah, sometimes we can power through things definitely, and we should if we have the capacity and get rid of it like this. And sometimes we see okay, no, I have to deal with it a little bit, a little bit more uh, practical. So either you know when to do what, or you have someone who helps you and guides you. Actually, to help have someone who helps us and guides us is always necessary. We need gurus, so many gurus, yes. But uh, the distinguishing has to happen. And then the other 
question about purity of devotees in our Shastra, this is quite interesting, definitely, and I will ask then also Adi Purusha Prabhu what he has to say about that. In one sense, you have success stories in our scriptures. And this is also very interesting because they are relatable, like Dhruva Maharaj. He became the pure devotee. Of course, the question is, was it just because to show a, as be an example, like Arjuna, in one sense, or was he really going through his Anartas? Uh, also, like, like uh, Hiranyakashipu, he was from Vaikuntha, he was Ch Chai or Vichai. Did he know that he is a demon and he played? Or he was a demon, right? And then the question about Draupadi, you mean she asked for something because of the sari? Yes. Yeah. So she can say, if I'm naked or not naked, I'm not a body, what's the deal? She played a certain role in this Leela and she was supposed to be presented in a certain way and not just for herself but also as an honorable wife of the Pandavas and all that. So there was more in play than just her being naked or not naked. So she wanted to protect the whole Dharma actually. She wanted to protect the Dharma to show, uh, show as a, be an example. Yeah? Because if she says, oh, if I'm naked, what's the problem? People will misuse anything. They say, okay, we can be naked, no problem. No, she was protecting Dharma. This is all about Dharma. And Dharma is the path towards transcendence. Dharma is what we need to, um, to uh, go to Krishna. And this has to be protected by all means. And Mahabharata is all about this Dharma. Many situations you can say, Wha what's the deal? Be transcendental. What's the problem? Be transcendental. No. Transcendence is only... Uh, Available through Dharma, right? Why was Krishna saying to Arjuna, fight? Actually, he was right in one sense. Arjuna was completely right. This is all Maya. These are not my f relatives. Why should I engage in this ghastly war? I should go in the forest and chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> right? I should go in the forest and chant Hare Krishna. But Krishna, as we know, says something completely different. To show the example. People need Dharma. Yeah? You might not need it. Draupadi might not need it. But people need Dharma. And this is why she acted like that. My opinion. But as I said, I would love to hear about this uh, from Adi Purusha Prabhu. Maybe the microphone can... Oh yeah. Yeah? Someone can bring the mic? No. The question was... Mo the she said, Dropout is the example. Why was she asking for something for herself in this situation with the sari if she um, is a pure devotee and a pure devotee never asks something for himself? Yeah, that's a rather deep question, but also <coughs> it is given as the legitimate exception uh, in the definition of pure bhakti, anya bila shita shunyam. Uh, this particular, this exact um, request is given as a legitimate example for pure devotees. Even the bridge bosses, when they are attacked by Indra, they say, Oh, Krishna, protect us. So this is a very uh, natural request. And this is even used to uh, justify um, the neophyte engaging in pure bhakti, that we may have other desires, but we don't have other goals, the lifelong goals. But in some occasion, now and then, we may have some natural uh, spontaneous spontaneous desires and in this particular case desire to protect life uh, is natural but um, I think Ananda Krishna Prabhu very nicely you have uh, shown that this could have been also completely uh, pure and unselfish and not even connected to saving her um, selfish um, feelings or something it uh, could have been just protecting her Dharma even just asking Krishna for protection could be saving her dharma. And uh, we also need to see exactly what was her request because she was carrying out her she was um, carrying out her duties in protecting her dharma and her place and her um, proper behavior and uh, within this she surrendered to Krishna. She accepted Krishna, you may uh, I have tried, I have done my best to protect myself and now if you think, so then she surrenders. If you think, uh, after trying, if you think that it should be protected, you can protect. If you think it should not be protected, you can leave me um, abused. 
that's that's up to you. But she she did her best. She made every effort. She turned for help to everybody, everybody present. She turned for help. She t turned to all the seniors. She turned to the husbands. She turned to the um, senior wise people in the assembly. And then she tried herself. And then after she exhausted everything, then she said, okay, Krishna, maybe that's your will. So, Govinda. <laughs> mm -hmm. She surrendered. Thank you. Yeah, very interesting point. So she was actually not attached to being um, dressed. She said, okay, now Krishna, whatever you desire. She was not, oh, now you have to save me. So no, if I'm dressed or not, it's up to you. That's an interesting point. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Good. Thank you so much. That was it. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Nitai gol premanande. The bro pod key.